Hello everyone! Let me show you how I made this actually inspired Edwardian blouse. I had 2 meters of medium weight cotton shirting fabric waiting for being used for a project. I accidentally came across a truly Victorian 1908 country blouse pattern. After making a quick mock-up, I decided I was somewhere between sizes B and C, so I adjusted the pattern accordingly. I carefully matched the checks I needed one back piece on the fold, two front pieces and two yoke pieces on the fold. I love playing with checks and stripes, so I thought that I would cut the yoke on the bias and I only remembered to cut one. I marked the wrong side of the fabric on each piece, just to be sure, because I could hardly tell the difference between the right and wrong sides. After cutting, I marked the notches on the other side as well. I usually only cut pieces I'm going to use right away. And then it dawned on me that I should have cut the yoke with the same allowance since I didn't cut it on the fold. I cut the two pieces again very carefully matching the pattern. And was quite satisfied with the result. Understanding the front placket proved to be a mental sport. Here you can see the fronts after ironing the folds. First, I laid down the pieces, wrong side up, then on the right hand side piece I folded the center front along the lines marked on the pattern. The left hand side was slightly more challenging. I folded along the first line, then an eighth of an inch from the second fold line, then I folded it again, this time one inch from the center. I don't seem to have footage of it, but from the wrong side I top the right hand side front an eighth of an inch away from the first fold. Then I turn the placket to the right side along this stitching line. I paste it along the placket because I can't stand being constantly stabbed by pins. I top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the inner edge of the placket from the right side. I made as tiny stitches as I could so that they are as invisible as possible because I don't usually like stitches that can be seen from the outside. I basted the placket on the left front piece as well, then top stitch from the right side. Next, I sew the side seams with a back stitch. I usually draw a line along which I am supposed to sew to be on the safe side. I cut one of the seam allowances short and also trimmed the other. I know it looks very unprofessional, but it's easier for me to cut curves on my knee. I have back and neck pain and a bad eyesight. Resting my foot on the edge of my chair and using my knee as a sewing or cutting support has two benefits. I have less pain because I can keep my spine straight and the piece I'm working on is close enough to my eyes so I can see it. I took the longer seam allowance under the shorter and basted it. It was a real fight but made falling so much easier. It would have been a lot harder to wrestle with pins. And here you can see attached to the blouse the yolk of my mocha. Something went wrong again and my fashion fabric behaved differently from the one I used for the mock-up which seemed perfect. Before tackling anything requiring mental exertion I hemmed the bottom of the blouse. Almost invisible. I returned to the problem of the yolk. I'd made these three blouses using one pattern, so I decided to try and use that for this project as well. 
This used to be a blouse I'd bought secondhand several years ago. I wore it a lot, loved it a lot, and I repurposed it when it wasn't in a wearable condition anymore. As you can see, there was a remarkable difference between the two yokes. I didn't raise the shoulder line of my new yoke because I didn't change the shoulder line of the front. I could never understand the neck part of patterns. Why is it so small? I have a thicker neck than that. I gathered the front shoulders, then pinned them to one of the yokes, the wrong side of the front to the right side of the yoke. After painting them, I placed the right side of the other yoke on the right side of the front so that the yokes sandwich the front. After pinning, I basted the three layers together. I backstitched the three layers together. As for the back, I also gathered the top of the back, however, I only basted and sewed it to the outer yoke. I put the blouse on. I wasn't entirely satisfied with the yoke, however, without the sleeves attached, you can't really tell whether it sits properly as the weight of the sleeves isn't pulling it into place. I was happy enough I didn't look like a balloon because yokes and gathered backs never look flattering on me. Later, I decided to cut away a bit from the neck part of the yoke. I pasted along the neck and sleeve edge of the yoke to keep the two together. I used my white thread because I wasn't going to remove it. Unfortunately, I was silly enough to top stitch the back of the yoke from the outside. Why? Since I used a different pattern for the yoke, the original collar didn't fit it anymore, so I combined the two patterns and I also made the band higher. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it stand properly, so after several trials and fails, I finally gave up and didn't bother anymore. This was the moment when I started to call this project a mock-up. I top stitched the lining collar band from the inside without poking the needle through the outer layer. I still couldn't feel comfortable with visible stitches on the outside and I wanted it to look neat from the inside as well. Top stitches inside are sort of okay. I cut the sleeves and sleeve plackets I clipped the fold lines on the paper pattern so it was easier to mark them on the placket with my pencil. Well, these plackets were a challenge as well. I was trying to fully grasp what needs to be ironed. I managed. I put the placket piece on the sleeve both wrong side up. I placed the paper pattern on the placket to double check everything was ok. I matched the solid line to the corresponding mark on the sleeve and pasted along this line. Then I sewed around this line, then cut up in the middle where the pasted line was. I cut in a Y shape. I turned the placket to the right side and with more brain work involved, I figured out what comes next.
I match the first fold lines to the stitching lines. I basted everything into place. I started to believe I could handle the plackets. Well, I could one but mess the other up. Here you can see where it needed top stitching. Top stitching. Next, I sewed the sides of the sleeves, trimmed the allowance, flat fold the seams. I made the cuffs. The pattern included two kinds of cuffs, short and long, however, I altered the length to make them look prettier on me. I gathered the cuff end of the sleeves, I tackled the gathers, pinned them, basted them, sewed them to the outer layer of the cuffs. I top stitched the cuff lining from the inside, taking care not to penetrate the outer layer. And at the same time, I top stitch from the outside as well. Do you think I'm crazy? But everything is neat. Next, I gather the top of the sleeves. I match the sleeve seam to the knot on the front and not to the side seam. Then a two-day battle commenced. I fitted the gathers, pinned them, basted them, put the blouse on, took it off, unpicked the basting thread over and over again. Simply overcast the seams in case I wanted to adjust the sleeves later. The pattern called for two shorter ties, but I opted for one long. It took me hours to hand stitch, but I could stitch miles and miles without ever getting bored. It would have been easier to follow the instruction and fold the edges inside and top stitch, but no way, no more visible stitches. No one will see the tie hidden under the vein band of my skirt, you might say. I cut a little rectangle, folded the edges and top stitched the two short ones. I gathered the waist in a mere day. I struggled hard again not to look like a balloon. I stitched a little band on top of the gathers, only to remove it later. It looked pretty on Louisa, but I placed it too high, it sat above the waist band of my skirt. Now, I only had to make the buttonholes. You can watch my video on how I sewed them. Before making the buttonholes on the collar band, I did some more top stitching, only to make ironing easier. More buttonholes. And some more.
I made a buttonhole at the centre back of the collar band as well because I intend to wear this blouse with detachable collars. And finally, the last button. This blouse is very similar to some of the ones Anne Shirley wore in the 1987 Canadian film production, which is a great favourite of mine. As she was a teacher and I am a teacher too, I thought it would be fun to have this blouse. It is super comfortable, my arms have full movement and this fabric is a dream to wear. Please like this video and if you'd like to follow my adventures, don't forget to subscribe.